predator had some gory fantasies. From cutting up his victim to tasting blood, to start off with, we have one of the darkest predators to ever be seen in the history of the entire show. For what this man was going to do is just pure evil. He had the, the bolt back and the magazines, all he had to do was tap them in. 41-year-old Todd Spike went by the screen name Loves to Eat Your Peach, and as disgusting as his screen name sounds like, the man's ideas were even more sinister. With every other predator that I come across, it surprises me how one can surpass the other in the level of obscenity. So coming back to Todd, this man chatted regularly for a month with a decoy who claimed to be 13 years old. Although he was surprised that she was just 13, it didn't stop him from calling her a little hottie. If you thought that was suggestive, what he did next will make you detest him. Todd was pretty sure of what he wanted from the girl. It had nothing to do with chatting online. The demented man had a set plan in place, and the very first step in executing his devious scheme was to send the innocent teen pictures of him off. As awful as that sounds, trust me, it looked even worse. But just when you think he derived pleasure by winking his in front of the young girl, the man surprises you with a little more than that. And this time, he had a specific request to make. During the chat, Todd made his wish very clear to the decoy. He wanted to watch her perform oral on another man. The kind of fetishes maniacs like him have never ceased to surprise me. But the decoy had a valid question to make. Where would this other man come from? But Todd had a ready answer for everything. It was as if he was already used to the drill. In response to her innocent question, Todd said that he would go to the mall and get a random man and bring him home. But the girl wasn't convinced yet. She asked him what if the person would get mad for doing such a horrendous thing, to which Todd replied that anybody would jump at the chance to have sex with her. Now, this man was clearly putting a lot of filthy ideas into an innocent brain. The extent of detail he went into shows that with every sentence, Todd was deriving some kind of intense pleasure. But that's when, out of nowhere, he revealed something big. Todd had absolutely no idea that the girl might be a part of an elaborate sting operation, for even if he had the slightest suspicion, he would have never revealed his past. During one such conversation, Todd told the girl that back in his prime days, he used to be a cop, and this was not for a brief period, but for 15 long years. And just as he said that, Todd showed us that he even had a vulnerable side. The fear of getting caught almost always haunted him, but it sadly wasn't enough to stop. Him. In order to keep his little secret, he insisted that nobody should find out about him, for if they did, he would surely go to prison. Well, I'm glad he had a nick of sense left in him, but did it save him from getting caught? After the long chat he had with the girl, Todd drove all the way to the sting house to meet the decoy, but just when he think he was gonna make his next move, Todd decided to drive in circles around the house. Needless to say, this entire turn of events was only getting creepier by the minute, and suddenly there was a change in plan. Instead of pulling into the driveway, Todd seemed to drive away. This strange behavior immediately alerted the cops who chased him down to a halt, and that's when they are horrified by what they discovered. Her arm happened to be a snub-nosed revolver in his front pocket, loaded and ready to fire. Boy, I'm glad the cops never allowed him to walk into the house, for what was a sting operation could have unexpectedly turned deadly. During interrogation, Todd gave more insight into his grim plan for the night. He apparently threatened the cops that he was going to to shoot the decoy or perhaps even the crew because he was being set up. Now, before you start assuming any of these were empty threats, let me show you what the cops found in his SUV, including this military assault rifle that was leaning on the passenger seat ready to fire. Oh, Just take a look at all the stash he has in there. What the hell was he up to? What did he really plan on doing? I guess we'll never know. But one thing is for sure, it looks like everybody involved in the case that night luckily managed to dodge a bullet. But this one right here had a rather unusual request. While most guys preferred to show their dominance, this one wanted to be submissive. And guess what? He even had a wide range of tools to fuel his fantasies. From leashes to collars to whips to blindfolds. God knows what else this weirdo had in mind, but he had no idea what he was walking into. Now, I don't know how many times you've seen something like this happen on the show, but this one is unique as hell. Chris was already busy grilling one of the weirdos when another decided to walk right in. Yep, that's exactly what happened. Call it miscommunication or whatever, but this sting turned out to be quite gripping. I mean, who the hell would expect this to happen? 
Why don't you come in over here and uh, stand right over here at the bar? How are you? Good. This has to be the show's first ever encounter with two weirdos at the same time. But look at these two jerks right here. Could you think of a more iconic duo than this? Bet you can't. As for Chris, he donned his boss mode on as he made the most legendary introductions you've ever seen. I want you guys to meet each other. This is Tennis Boy 213. And, and Tennis Boy, this is... Uh to mistresses, right? Well, Chris, take a bow, my man. That's one hell of an introduction right there. You could see Tennis Boy behave like he had no part to play in anything that was happening around him. While save two mistresses, yeah, I know how cheesy that sounds, but that's what Yazan preferred to go by. And this jerk was left perplexed. He was probably thinking, what the hell have I gotten myself into? Well, no idea. And who are these men chilling at the house? No idea again. Well, Yazan was the one who looked startled all this while, but Chris asked him Next, left Tennis Boy confused. Did you bring your collar with you? No. Wait, what? What's with the collar now? Well, allow me to give you an idea of what was behind this 26-year-old's filthy mind. To the world, Yazan was an ex-Jordanian basketball player who was currently a student and personal trainer. But to her, he wanted to be a dog. No, I am not kidding. And if you don't believe me, then take a look at this. We can't get too detailed, but we can say he prefers to be treated like a dog. He sends live video of himself naked. So you see how this weirdo preferred to be the submissive one during the act. He wanted to get all leashed up and expected her to do all the action. To make things clear, Yazan even shared a video of him wearing only the dog's collar. And I'm sure she got the message loud and clear. But Chris wasn't done yet. The TV presenter fired away questions like there was no tomorrow. But Yazan was facing an issue. You sent this? I can't you. You can't remember. That's you, though, right? You see what happened right there? I call it the great convenient memory loss. I mean, how fitting is that? To just forget everything you did or said just when you want to. But sadly for this prick, Chris had something solid to counter every claim that Yazan snubbed. Because out of nowhere, Chris pulled out this. Is that you in those pictures? So, who is that in those pictures, huh? Did the pictures help you juggle your memory for a bit now? I'm sure it did. Because this weirdo, all of a sudden, turned into this puny cat who looks so innocent and so ignorant and sweet. But it looks like it's now time to burst his bubble, because Chris was growing sick and tired of all the drama he was putting up. As for the other guy, he knew exactly what was about to happen. And so Chris allowed Tennis Boy to do the honors and reveal what was in store for both of them. Although he started with a lot of hesitancy, Tennis Boy knew exactly what would happen next. Yeah, yeah well, we're, we're both going to get arrested, I think. Yep, well, the only lease you'll be tied to will be the one that'll take you to prison. And going by Yazan's crazy preferences, I don't think you would mind being cuffed, right? And just Tennis Boy said, Yazan had to submit himself and surrender as soon as he left the house, but not in the way he wanted to. On the ground, on the ground, on the ground. Later at the police station, Yazan made some shocking revelations. Apparently, he had never gone all the way with any woman before. But can you believe him? I think he's just cutting this innocent face just to escape jail time. But this next predator got so furious over the simplest of things. I'm sure this guy had some major anger management issues. And what you're about to see is proof of it. Uh, or like we all have our finishes. Here we have a 29-year-old Michael Warner who went by the screen name Can I R You a the setup was happening at Long Beach, California, and this man, an unemployed computer technician, had come to meet a girl who was 13 years old. In his online chat, Warner told the decoy that he wanted to not only hook up with her, but also have a sex with her. With no other better reaction to think of, the decoy replied with just four letters. She exclaimed, ouch, but instead of deterring him, it only made him more horny. To ease the decoy out, Warner justified that although painful, it would be a good type of pain. People like this man right here will say anything under the sun to make sure he gets what he wants. And so to materialize his disgusting desires, Warner entered the house to meet the decoy. Once in, he started acting all comfortable with her. The first thing he did was to pour a little bit of the drink for the decoy, or maybe even for himself. But just as he was doing that, in comes Chris Hansen. We have a lot to talk about. 
Why don't you have a seat? But just take a look at how steady his hands are. That stare that he gives Hanson just as he walks in had me right there. What would he do next? Pick the jar up and smash it over Hanson's head, maybe? Men as deranged as this one are capable of anything. But Warner decided to play it down. When Hanson asked him what he was doing there, Warner casually taking a sip out of the drink blurted out saying, hanging out. But that's not true, is it? When Hanson tried to corner him by reading the chat logs, Warner had the creepiest response ever. I had a guy thing here, okay? Got to got. Yeah. Uh, or like we all have our finishes. But what he said next will make you question his intentions and perhaps also his sanity. It wasn't just limited to Warner spoke about shaving her and cutting her and tasting her blood, and also told that people do some things and that it's normal to have certain fantasies. Not sure in which corner of the world this is normal, but back in his head, it surely was. But Hansen would not let it rest. He kept nudging him to open up. When he asked if it was normal for a 29-year-old man to behave as such, we got to see Warner's other side. For a man who looks so calm and composed all the while, it looks like Hansen had finally touched the wrong nerve. Although he never made a gross move, Warner was seen clenching his fists, and from what can be seen, he was clasping the glass real hard. At some point, it even looked like he was going to throw the glass at Hansen's face, but probably Hansen sensed the danger too. And at that same moment, Hansen revealed his true identity. It takes a lot of guts to stand up against lunatics who are absolutely unpredictable, and Hansen has managed to do just that on several occasions. Once the TV host's identity was out in the open, the camera crew barged into the room, and we all know what happens next. As Warner walked out of the door, he was pinned down by the cops, handcuffed and taken in for interrogation. Warner later confessed that he had planned on consensually <laughs> the 13-year-old and to also doing profound things with her, which according to him, but let's not forget the fact that this man was so deranged that referring to the decoy, if she's 13, I'm 12. But this next predator tried to act smart, but wound up in his own lies. You thought you were talking to a 102-year-old woman who you wanted to That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying it sounds like we're not can't people be honest? So this is the case of a 32-year-old man who had almost gotten caught in the trap set by the crew, but the problem was he was kind of aware of the idea that he could get caught for his actions, or the decoy he was in touch with was a real undercover cop. But how did he get wind of it? So during his chat with the decoy, just to make his stance clear, Edgar made a declaration. He said, I would never meet a female under 18 to do anything s I'm reporting to Yahoo, please leave me alone. But wait, that's just him trying to save his if at all his luck runs dry and his cover is blown. If you go just by the chat logs, one might assume that this man was here to cause no harm. Edgar is not eager to leave her alone, but he still has his trust issues. In a desperate attempt, he tried to cover all his tracks so there was no proof. But he couldn't get over his fancies. He wanted to talk to the decoy, and that is exactly what happened. Nobody's here. My parents are gone. In the end, after hours and hours of contemplating, Edgar finally finds himself in the doorway of the house. But he could not find the courage to enter. The man had turned himself into a nervous ball of shit as he often looked around trying to clear all of his suspicions. This makes me wonder how strong his desire must have been to meet this young girl to fulfill his fetishes. Throughout the entire interaction, he held his guard up, but in the end, he did fall prey to his perverted desires. Once he entered the house, Edgar wanted to ensure that there was no cameras recording him, and just as he started scanning the place, Chris Hansen made a grand entry from another door. You are a suspicious guy, Rick. I told you there's people here. It looks like all of Edgar's fears were true. First, he didn't want to enter the living area and be seated when Hanson asked him to. And then he started to argue with Hanson, claiming that he had not done anything. However, he kept pacing back and forth because you know, I know, and so does he, that he's so very screwed. But soon things take a turn when Hanson begins to read out the astonishing things Edgar wrote to the girl. But he constantly kept denying any of it and insisted that he had never done anything like this before. But the moment he literally sent pictures of his willy to the decoy had sealed his fate right then and there. But just when you think this nervous wreck would either break down or try to escape, he gets up from the chair and frustratingly moves forward towards Hansen. What was he trying to do? Lunge at him? However, Hansen continued to pester him with some disgusting details from the chat logs. But Edgar continued to act like the victim the entire time. He was repeatedly trying to shift the blame from himself to her in an attempt to get out of the mess. He even made lame statements like because I was gone to get sick.
cigarettes, fill up my tank, and then go fishing. When finally the camera crew walked in and Hanson revealed his true identity, Edgar sat back into the chair and began to speculate his options. He knew that his time had come, and so he blurted out the evidence. He said, My life is screwed. I'm done. My family's done, they're waiting to arrest me, they're waiting to take me to jail. This man tried to talk his way out of his situation by lying and changing the story as much as he could. But he didn't realize that Hansen was actually holding the transcripts from the chat logs the entire time, and lying did not make any sense anymore. But for this next predator, it wasn't his first time getting caught. I guess some people just don't learn from their mistakes. What are you doing here, Michael? I'm sorry. Cyberg was previously caught sending pictures of his genitals to a girl who claimed to be 13. The last time Cyberg was caught, he had told police that he was under treatment for seizures, and he had a scar on his head which was caused by a fall when he was an infant. But that wasn't the only scar Cyberg had. He, however, managed to escape when he pleaded not guilty and trying to seduce an underage child. Unfortunately, the case was still working its way through court, and Cyberg had already laid his eyes on his next victim. Fast forward to eight months later, Cyberg still used the same screen name and still could not snap out of his obsession with 13 year olds. The second time around, he started talking to a decoy who claimed she is 13. Nothing much had changed from before, as he was still interested in and even asked for group but since he got caught before, he tried to make sure he wasn't dealing with an undercover cop. But guess what? Cyber decides to postpone their meeting by a day. Not because he suspected the decoy, but because he had to go to court for the ongoing investigation against him. The next day, however, Cyber walks right into the trap he still hadn't set himself free from. Since he already had an ongoing case against him, the decoy was asked to maintain a safe distance from him. But none of it was required as Hansen swiftly made his way to intercept the man with the scar. Who looks familiar to me. Oops. Stupid! When Hansen asked Cyberg if he remembered who he was, there was obviously no way that he would have forgotten Hansen's face. When Hansen was showing him the transcripts, it looked like Cyberg was beginning to get annoyed. Every time he lifted his hands to brush his face or wipe his eyes, I expected Cyberg was onto something fishy. It was clear that Cyberg wanted to leave the house as soon as possible, but Hansen would not allow him to escape without talking. That's when Cyberg started to apologize and admit that he had committed a mistake. But how much of it did he really mean? If he he really meant what he said, why do we find him in the same exact situation again? I promise this time, if you rip it up, I'll never come back. It is later revealed that just in the span of 24 hours of going in and out of court, Cyberg had spoken to three other decoys who were also underage. The reason why this man was perceived as dangerous was because he had previously done time for assaulting someone with a bat. Thankfully, this time everyone maintained a safe distance, and the crew made sure there were no tools that Cyberg could get his hands on while at the house. But it looks like, once again, things turned out in his favor. Cyberg was charged with attempted lewd acts on a minor, but yet again, he pleaded not guilty. Apparently, his lawyers claimed that he had mental issues, and for this reason, despite his distorted fantasies, Cyberg is allowed to walk free. And who knows, he might have already contacted another unsuspecting innocent child. But this next dude not only had a massive lack of judgment, but he was also absolutely paranoid. Why do I say that? Because this dummy was so determined that despite all the signs, he drove right back into the trap all by himself. So here's what happened. The man you're looking at is Kaiz Maju, and this dude might have been one of the luckiest weirdos to have ever escaped the scene, but only if he had better judgment. As soon as Kaiz entered the driveway, he caught on to something that most weirdos happen to miss. What? What's what? Oops, it looks like the crew screwed up big time. Someone had forgotten to turn down the radio's volume. And damn, it looks like this loser's gonna make a run. And that's exactly what Kai's did. He immediately packed up and drove away. Seriously, if you ask me, I think this one dodged a bullet the first time, only to go around the block and drive right back into the trap just five minutes later. Phew, heights of desperation right there, don't you think? But this stinker had some really big plans for the day. And when I say big plans, I mean really big ones. Like this. I will show you heaven, he writes. I love it. I can do that all day. Oh, yeah? You want to show heaven? Well, you're going to get heaven in just a bit. Kais believed he had some kind of superpower that would help him go all the way for the entire day. His chats were so graphic that I can't show them to you even if I want to. But you know what? He'd better save all that energy, because what's going to happen next was going to truly test his stamina. This punk had no idea what he was in for, and despite all the suspicion, he still made a request. 
Give me a tour. <laughs> Give me a tour? Yeah. Um, let's see. Well, I'm sure he wasn't expecting a hot tub. Guys seemed to be finally easing up a bit, and as the tour continued, but someone decided to sneak right in. Everything happened so quickly, the guys barely had any time to react. One moment he saw the curtains move, and in the next, something unexpected happened. Now, Matt, I need to talk to you for a minute. Matt, why don't you have a seat right over there? The TV presenter was literally trying to catch up, but Kais was already at the exit. While most losers are intercepted by the cops and handcuffed before being driven off to the nearest interrogation station, something different happened in this case. Get him, let it stop it. Get him, cuff him. I think you get the idea of what went down with this freak. Kais was hit by a jolt of at least 50,000 volts that sent him flying to the ground. Don't worry, it wasn't enough to send him to heaven, but it was enough to get him three years of probation with a lifetime registry and unsavory lists. But was this enough to teach him a lesson? Well, Kais did something horrible that landed him a 15-year sentence behind bars. This dude is currently one offense away from being sentenced to 25 years or life in prison. And I think that's enough time for him to take his fellow inmates to heaven. But take a look at this next weirdo. Here comes 53-year-old James Wiles. No, this is not a scene from the apocalyptic world of zombies. This is James Wiles, the 53-year-old man who is considered one of the most hated guys who have ever been caught on the show. Would you believe it if I said this guy who couldn't even walk in a straight line actually drove for two whole hours just to make it to the sting house? Well, that's exactly what he did. Talk about determination, huh? And before you start to sympathize with his physical condition, let me tell you that this loser had some of the most vile intentions sketched out inside his filthy head. So James was once a trucker in Jacksonville, Florida, and apparently he'd met with an accident that pretty much shattered his spine. Ideally, he should have been grateful to survive the accident and use the rest of his life to do some good. But sadly, James went on a totally different trajectory that scarred the lives of several others. There was nothing that could hold him back, which is why I'm glad the Watchdog organization caught on to him. It's crazy how despite his physical weakness, James seemed to be quite determined in having his way. Now, if you're an ardent follower of the show, there's no way you've missed the ham bubger memes. Yep, that's the same guy I'm talking about right here. This weirdo is known not only for his rather unique screen name, but also for his explicit chat. He first started the conversation like a madman who was insanely in love. Mind you, he was apparently crazy in love with someone he'd not even met. The living zombie also promised to be really gentle while he went on her. But that's not all. He had a very specific request to make. He wanted to see her in nothing but pink and Wow, that's some fantasy right there. And defying all odds, James kept his promise and showed up right on the dot. I wasn't sure if you were coming. Oh, yeah. Told you I'd be here. Sorry, I had to cut the clip right there because James started to stimulate himself just as he took a seat. This man was clearly sick in his head. I mean, that grin on his face gives away a lot more than it should, and his body language was screaming out to everyone around to be on high alert. Losers like this one could go to any extent to get what they want, and Chris had to actually cut his interview short because of this very reason. Can't take chances with maniacs, right? So when Chris revealed his true identity, the rest of the crew popped out to reveal themselves, but nobody was ready for one of the craziest things that James had to say about his condition. Now, mind you, this is the first time on the show that someone was saying something as hideous as this. I'm past that state now, so I'm telling you the truth, I am past that state. Wait a minute, do you want me to believe that your little guy down there was dysfunctional? Then why even show up at the sting house? To flaunt your weakness? Well, I don't think so, but James continued to play pretend throughout the interrogation. However, nothing could save him from the clutches of the law and order. But this next guy had some really deranged ideas when it comes to making love. While James wanted to be as gentle as a cat, yeah, he actually said that, this next loser wanted to do stuff with the cat. Ew! That sounds absolutely demented. But this guy proved that he needed the much-hyped shock therapy that is used to treat lunatics. If not, who in their right mind would walk into a stranger's house looking like this? He's walking into the living room. Emily, call out. Hey, just take a seat at the table. I'll be right there. Gosh, I still can't believe he actually did that. How desperate was he really? The man we're looking at is Marvin Locken, and I'm actually at a loss for words to describe him. I really wonder what he expected would happen. I mean, in a world where people are so insecure about their looks, I think we've got something to learn from this guy. He probably thought he was Aquaman, but there was someone who was ready to throw water on his face. Want to explain yourself? 
Grab me that towel right there, please. That's one hell of an entry right there, Chris. I mean, obviously Marvin was stunned to find Chris on the other side of the door. And considering the very compromised position he was found in, I hope he feels embarrassed for life. And of all the things he could tell in response to the reason he was at the Sting House, this is what he had to say. Making a mistake. Making a mistake. You drive into somebody's driveway, walk into their house, well, I'm glad you realized that, you prick. But showing up at the house bare bottom was the least of Chris's worry. Because once you delve into the chat logs, you'll realize how whacked out this monster really was. Yes, that's exactly what he was. To top it off, this jerk actually admitted that something would have happened if Chris hadn't shown up to ruin all of his plans. He was pretty positive of going all the way, and he had absolutely no shame or remorse in admitting it. But what was the plan exactly? Chris had a very crucial question to ask in this context. What? What was your plan with the cat? I don't know, I was just being stupid with that. Look at the attitude of this guy. Some nerve you got right there, man. Like, are you for real? So, what's with the cat and the whipped cream, you ask? This piece of junk wanted the girl to experiment with the cat and get some practice before trying out the same thing with him. And what's more, he wanted to watch all this unfold right before his eyes, because that's the only way he could guide her and instruct her better. How thoughtful, right? And to top it off, he made more claims that I simply cannot believe. This is the first time which will never happen again, I can tell you that for now. I really can't understand what was so funny about it, and I don't even think it was his first time. Do you believe him? I for sure don't. Well, at this point, I don't even care if it's his first time or not. However, I do hope it's the last. This loser deserves the worst possible punishment ever. But this next weirdo made one of the lamest excuses I've ever heard on the show. He definitely wanted to give the relationship a name, but what he ended up saying was just plain wrong. I mean, just look at this guy. I don't think there was anything alarming about him. If you ask me, he looked like someone who was excited to just make it to the sting house. Nobody would have ever guessed that behind all that energy beaming out of this weirdo, there was something very sinister. The man you're looking at is Jerry Wayne, and this guy actually sparked off rumors of an unexplainable conspiracy. But let's cut to the moment he entered the house, and you'll soon understand why people couldn't stop gushing about him. In every other sting, we've always seen someone invite these morons into the house. But Jerry decided to not only invite himself in, but also do this. Yeah, you got a workout today. Say what? Say a nice little walk today. Yep, that's my very eager man who wanted to start a conversation even before checking if there was anyone at the house. I mean, why not? Just walk right in and start a conversation like you've been around forever. And if you were able to catch what he was saying, Jerry was talking about something on the lines of starting his workout sooner and how he headed out for a walk. That's when Chris interrupted him and asked him this. Where did you have to walk from? Oh, way, way, way. Well, I guess you simply cannot unsee what you saw now, can you? I mean, this moron had quite an unusual way to describe where he came from, and these few seconds were enough for him to become the butt of all jokes. People started talking as if Jerry was some kind of an extraterrestrial being. Like, this viewer believed Jerry hailed from a place which was possibly 700 God knows how many million light years away. Obviously, that was a PJ. But Chris actually acknowledging the place like it really existed made this segment that much more entertaining. But that was not the only only reason people thought Jerry was unearthly. The more he spoke, the more alien he looked. And no, I'm not kidding, okay? Tell me you don't find this weird. Outside to say hi and meet a friend. Hi and meet a friend. Yeah, but I probably got the wrong address. The wrong address? Did you see that? I couldn't really take my eyes off him. Why does it look like his mouth was somehow disconnected from the rest of his face? One of the viewers even wondered if he was wearing someone else's face. But that isn't the most disturbing thing about him now, is it? Most morons usually try to explain their position by trying to convince Chris that they were some sort of mentor or educator or even protector. But this one's brains work differently. Of all the things he could say, Jerry said this. Yeah, big brother or not? Big brother. Uh, uh, Aspect, yeah. yeah, right. He just wanted to be a big brother who came to give some much-needed brotherly advice. But you know what, Jerry? It's really hard for me to believe that when you were the one who shared some really explicit pictures online. What sort of a brother does that? It's just gross to even think about it. But who knows? There may be crazier weirdos with even crazier ideas waiting to gatecrash the Stinghouse in the future.